Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to teach you how to make an adorable cinch top tote that has endless amounts of usage. It's so versatile. Um, we made one for kids going back to school. They could put their lunch in there, maybe um, crayons in there, little projects in there. We've even thought of using some shabby shapes to add for maybe an Easter egg hunt. It'd be fun for the little ones to go out and then they'd be able to put the eggs inside and all the little goodies and cinch up the top so nothing falls out. A trick-or-treat bag or just, you know, maybe you're going to a, you know, a day crafting or quilting with your friends. Again, versatility, big time. And it's super fun, super simple to make. So let's get started. Now you'll need to be sure to go to the Shabby Fabrics homepage, click on the free downloads. That's at the very bottom of the homepage. You're looking for the cinch top tote pattern and you'll be able to download all of the measurements. I just want to show you the mechanics of how the bag goes together. So don't worry about the measurements right now. You can either print that and have them follow along or do that afterward. This is the Joy de Vivre collection from Michael Miller. It's beautiful. But as you can see, the tote looks cute in a variety of different fabrics. You'll need a main fabric. You'll need your lining fabric. You'll need some decor bond. It's a heavier weight. It's not technically an interfacing, but we're using it like an interfacing today. You'll need your handle fabric. You'll need fabric for the rim. And then of course the top portion, which comes up in cinches. That's what's so unique about this bag is that it does seal off at the top. Um, the first thing that you want to do with your main fabric is you'll simply bring the sides up and sew on both sides. And we've done that ahead of time. And actually, even before that time, let me back up a step. We wanted our bag to have some stiffness to it, some oomph to it. So the first thing that we actually did with our decor bond is we went ahead and ironed that to the back of the main piece. So I want you to see how the decor bond has a shiny side. That's your fusible side. So go ahead and get yourself a nice hot iron lay out your main fabric for the outside of the bag to core bond it's obviously shiny side down iron that together then that's when you'll bring that uh, that's all attached that we've done that ahead of time so here we'll just bring that up pin and you're just going to sew on the two sides with a quarter inch seam and we've done that ahead of time now notice how the bag has a it sits nicely. You'll need to box the corners. If you've never boxed the corners, it's not a big deal. Um, first thing you want to do once you've sewn the quarter inch is I just like to go and clip those corners ever so slightly. It makes boxing corners simpler. Now I'll just roll through this very quickly. We use a five inch boxed corner. So I just reach inside the bag and I press this good and flat. And with my ruler, this is the OmniGrip six and a half inch ruler. I love it. It's so much easier to use for small projects like this than a big ruler is. And I'm just looking for five inches here. And you see how I'm achieving the five is once I am there, I simply draw my line. I like to insert a pin in that. Take that to the sewing machine. You'll run a straight stitch right along that line and then just uh, cut off a quarter of an inch You'll do the same thing on the other side. Now I've done that ahead of time, trying to save us some time here. So I went ahead, see my drawn line there? I sewed, cut off the quarter inch, same thing. Now you'll just go ahead and turn your bag right side out. Very simple. The lining is done exactly the same way. So you'll simply repeat the steps. The only thing different is there's no decor bond that you will iron to the back of the lining. It's just the lining fabric, but same thing. In fact, I'll even just show you real quick. You'll just bring those sides up, sew the quarter of an inch. We did that ahead of time. That's there for you right there. And then same story. You'll just go ahead, quarter, uh, just trim that off, trim that off, box the corners the exact same way. So that's what you'll have right here. Now, You'll go ahead and just put this inside your bag, matching the side seams. So 
So I'm gonna go ahead, see those side seams? And I did go ahead and press that seam open. It just helps. Anytime you're matching seams, like in a bag like this, I press seams open. Quilting, we tend to press seams to one side or the other, but with a bag, it seems to be pressing seams open. It just helps things lie a lot flatter. So that's pressed open and that's pressed open and I'm just gonna start pinning. And I'm gonna pin that all the way around. And when I get back, we'll move on to the next step of the bag. Okay, now that my lining is pinned to the outside of the bag, I'm gonna go ahead and make my handles. That's the next step. So, notice how, I'm, and I'm making this bag again, of course. Um, grab your handle fabric, and you wanna get that iron going, and fold that in half, and press. And then once that's pressed, you'll have that nice crease, and you'll just bring those raw edges to that crease, press again, fold in half, press again, and we'll sew an eighth of an inch on either side. And we've done that ahead of time. So you've got that here. Put that aside. Now with the rim fabric, it's made of actually two different pieces of the same fabric. And you'll have, again, the decor bond. Um, two pieces of it. And in your uh, download, it'll mention how the decor bond is slightly shorter by a quarter of an inch than the actual strip. That's on purpose. That's not a mistake in the pattern. And that was only because, let me show you what I'm talking about here. When you iron the decor bond to the back of the um, handle or the rim fabric, we wanted to keep that away from the seam allowance just because the decor bond's pretty thick and the seam's already thick enough without adding the decor bond to that. So that's for that reason, we've made that strip shorter. Um, so go ahead and get your decor bond and iron that to the back of, you actually will cut four of these. If I said two, I meant to say four. The two for each half of the rim. So one piece of the decor bond ironed to a strip and then you'll have the other one that doesn't have anything. Let me just get that out of the way so I'm not confusing you. You'll use your small ruler again and measure in from the edge four inches. So let's do that now. And we're gonna make a mark. Same down here. Now you would repeat these steps for the other half of the rim, okay? So this is a step that you're going to do twice. You will go ahead and let me pin that in place. Just like that. Actually, I think we might have to come in like this. And like this. And I like to go ahead and extend it beyond so I know I'm catching it in for sure. So that's just me because sometimes I've gone a little bit too shallow and I missed it. Now with your other fabric, you're going to come right sides together and pin all the way down, okay? So pin all the way down and you're going to sew a quarter inch seam. And then we've done that ahead of time. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like, okay? So we have same sight picture. And then you'll want to go ahead and press this seam open. I'll get that out of the way. You're going to do this step twice. So you're going to have two of these. All right. So keep in mind, this will be pressed open. Now we will bring those two right sides together and pin. Same, same as you would did before. You're going to sew a quarter inch seam. Do that, pin down here, same. Throw a pin in there real quick so you know what I'm doing. One more. And you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam on both of those ends. Now I've done that ahead of time, okay? And that's what, it, that's what you get. So you can imagine when you sew the quarter inch seam um, and then turn that right side out. In fact, I'll try to do that real quick so you can see this. And then you just fold it down. Okay, so that's what we've done ahead of time. Now, you'll take this to your bag. You've got your side seams and your side seams. 
You'll fit this over the top, almost like an upside down crown. And I'm going to match those side seams. And now I'm just going to take those pins out and I'm just going to join up with this all the way around. All right, so you can just see, just like before, I'm just fitting this thing all the way around. And I, at this point, while there is another step of adding this, at this point, this is enough for me that I want to sew now. I don't want to keep adding more and more layers. Three is kind of my max, and I've got three. In fact, I even have more than three. So at this point, I'm going to pin all the way around, take this to the sewing machine, and sew just slightly under a quarter of an inch all the way around. Then, once that's done, we're ready to move on to making the actual upper portion of the bag, which we're calling the cover. So let's go ahead and move on to that now. You'll need two pieces of cover fabric. Let's get all of this out of the way. We don't need that anymore. And again, the measurements will be right there on the website, on the download. So you'll get your two pieces of fabric on that ahead of time, and you'll just press in a quarter of an inch, a quarter of an inch, and sew about an eighth of an inch so that you're just enclosing that. All right, we've done that ahead of time. Let me show you that now. So that's what you have at this point. Just two rectangles, quarter inch, quarter inch, and you've sewn an eighth of an inch. So that are, that's where we are at this point you will tuck in ever so slightly the upper portion. Actually, we're gonna sew those two together. Let me show you what that looks like. It's gonna be easier for you to see it. You see how I went and sewed those two sides together? I basically stitched right back over where I just was, except I left a two inch opening at the top on each side. I actually went and measured my two inches and I marked. Okay, that's what you would do over here. You just measure down two inches and mark, two inches down and mark. Pin that if you'd like, go to the sewing machine, sew right back where you had just sewn, stopping here so that you have this little flap at the top. That's where we are right now. Now you'll bring in ever so slightly those top corners and you can use an ironing. This, an iron will help you with this for sure. It'll just hold everything kind of in place. Fold that down about a quarter of an inch and fold it down again until you get to kind of that stopping point, right? You're gonna feel that because that's where your seam is. We've done this ahead of time where we folded it down and that's what it's gonna look like and we pinned it. See how those are tucked in? That'll be important later and you'll see why. So once you're here like this, you want to sew just about an eighth of an inch, maybe slightly more, down here toward this edge because this part needs to be open. That's the channel for the ribbon or cording or whatever you end up doing to close your bag. So don't, don't sew in the middle of that, sew in the lower portion of that. And we've done that ahead of time. And that's what it'll look like at this stage, okay? So now we will take that to our bag of course, this was all sewn together, right? And we fit this right down over the top, just like this, and we pin again, making sure side seams are with side seams. And we just sew again, just like we did before. But this time, remember how when you sewed the rim on, you were slightly under a quarter of an inch? This time I want you to be slightly more than a quarter of an inch, all right? And you would just fit this on so slightly more than that quarter of an inch all the way around. So let me show you what that would look like at this stage. That's where we get this. We fit that down and around, sewed slightly more than a quarter of an inch, and now it's time to bring that up. So let's do that. All the way up and flip up your rim. So cute, so versatile. Who doesn't need another bag, especially one that will cinch closed? All right, now, I want you to see something. Inside the bag, we've got raw seams. If you don't want to go to the next step of closing those seams, basically insert your ribbon and you're done. 
but we wanted to be able to, especially if it's used for lunch tote and it might have spills in it, we wanted to be able to wash it. What I'd like you to do now, if you want that kind of versatility, is you're just gonna, you're just gonna smooth this out, all right? Even if you try to have some kind of pin out here, just to keep things kind of running smooth. All we did is smooth everything out all the way around. Kind of, you kind of feel the seam and you kind of roll it down, pinning all the way around. Took this to the sewing machine and we sewed. You can feel that ridge in there. You sew, sew slightly larger than a quarter inch. And now you'll enclose that raw seam so when you wash it, there's no raw edges inside the bag. It's not going to fray out on you. And that's what we did here. I don't know if you can see it, but we, we went ahead and did that. Now, once that step's done, the only thing remaining to do is if you choose cording or if you choose ribbon, what we got a 19, 20 inch piece, grab a clothespin, simply feed that through. And you may want to use some fray check on the bag, especially if you're going to wash it. I would recommend using something that's going to keep that from fraying out um, in the washing machine or just from repeated wear, even if you don't wash it. Um, you kind of really want to knot this at the very, very, very end, but you get the idea. Put the clothespin in there, or the safety pin rather, excuse me, and you're just going to feed that in all the way around. Bring it out. Again, tie knots in the ends, fray check as you desire, cinch up your bag, and you are complete. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this bag from Shabby Fabrics.